everyone. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Misty Doan, and I'm super, super excited about this project today. I've been dreaming it up for a while, and since it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I thought it would be perfect to make this beautiful, easy argyle quilt in pinks, um, and it comes together so nice. It's made using the Precious Pinks by Artisan Batiks. You can do either a package of 10 inch squares or five half yard cuts. So you can choose five of the prints from the collection that you love the best um, and get this beautiful argyle pattern. It comes together so quick and easy. Um, you can see my five fabrics that I've selected here. And then you're also going to need one and three quarter yards of your background fabric. You're gonna need three packages of this medium rick rack in pink, and each one of those is two and a half yards, so seven and a half yards of rick rack. You're also going to want the large simple wedge template um, from us here at Missouri Star to make this super quick and easy. So to get started, you can cut out your wedges from your 10 inch square or from your strips of fabric, whichever option you go for. So let me just show you how quickly that works out. I just have some strips here ready to go. And so since this is batiks, we don't really have any selvage to worry about. So I just wanna make sure that I'm all the way to the edge and I can make a cut. And then once I've made that first cut, because I'm right-handed, I like to flip this around so I'm not cutting across myself. And then now I can just cut all the way down my strips, just like that. And I get two at once. Whoops, I shifted. It's a good thing to call out because sometimes it happens. And so you can see here where my, my ruler shifted. And so my blade kind of slid to the side. That's okay, we can just repeat this. We've got some extra fabric here. So now I've fixed that. This is still good. It's a great learning experience. Now we can turn this back around and true up that edge one more time so that our wedges will still be accurate. And then we can just set that aside as waste. It's no big deal. Turn it back again. That's why you always wanna take your time when you're cutting if you're anything like me, it's easy to rush through. Just cut, cut, cut. And because these are already in sets of two, I can get one more wedge out of this piece that's folded in half here, but I need all of my matching sets of two. So I just get four sets per strip, just like so. And then we're going to start by sewing these together. I just keep them together just like this and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam right across the top. And I'm gonna do that with all of my sets. So I've got a different color cut here. I'm just gonna sew a few of these with my quarter inch seam allowance. is a little bit different than how we traditionally build a wedge quilt, but because I wanted to add this rickrack detail, I found this was the easiest way to do it. You can see I'm just chain piecing, putting one of these diamonds in after the other. And it goes really quick. Just have a few of these ready. There we go. Now we can cut these apart and then press open our diamonds. So let's do that. We'll give this a press. Roll it back. And because you're going to have different colors, I like to keep my same colors together in piles. And so this is actually a different pink than that one, so I would just make a different pile for it. Just set that seam, roll it back. Oh, 
Oh, here's my other one I sewed. Just like that. All right, and like I said, you're gonna repeat that with all of your colors, either the five that you selected or your whole layer cake. Either way, um, it's gonna be beautiful. So let me move some of this out of the way. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with some background wedges. You can see I've got some cut here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together. Exactly like we did our print diamonds. There we go. And let's go ahead and press these as well. There's that one. And now we get the magic of adding the rickrack. So this is really fun. And this is where you can kind of make this design your your own, however you desire. You can see I only added the rickrack detail in every other background diamond. So there's actually 10 of these whole diamond rickrack blocks because you can see we've got one on each end here that we're going to end up cutting in half, but you do need that full one for your layout. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten full diamonds. And then you're going to have um, eight that are just half of your diamond. And you can see here, one, two, three, four, top and bottom. And I'll show you how to make those as well. But let's start by making this whole diamond and adding the rickrack to it. So to make my mark on where to put the rickrack, I, at first I was like, oh, I can just eyeball it to make an X, which you probably could because you're not actually matching it up. But I wanted it to be really close when I put all of this together. So it really looked like those lines continued. So all that I did to do that is I just folded my top corner down to each side and just finger pressed like so. So you can see I've got a little mark right there and then I can repeat it on this other side and finger press. And you can see how that works just like that and then we can turn it around and do the same thing. And then that gives us a guide for where we want to take our rickrack. And we know they're going to be really close every single time we do this. So there we go. And now I can just take my rickrack from the package. And I usually just keep it attached and I keep my scissors handy. Um, and I just trim it off as I sew to have as little um, waste as possible on it. And so I'll just lay this here to start. And you can pin if you want. I found it really easy to maneuver without pinning. And so we're just gonna take this and sew right down the middle. And I actually just used white thread because I wanted to make sure you guys could see how forgiving this is on the quilt behind me. And so you can see it's just got this white stitch line that runs through the rickrack. If you don't want that, obviously just match your thread. It's no big deal, but I wanted to show you um, that it looks great either way. So let's stitch this down. We can start with our rickrack right under our presser foot. And if you have the diagonal seam tape on your machine, I'm actually gonna fold this up because it's kind of magical. The, the width of this rickrack falls right in the center of that diagonal seam tape. And since we're using white background fabric, I can actually see right through it. And so it makes it so simple to make sure that my rickrack is going in a straight line and that my seam is gonna be running right down the middle. So that's another great tip if you have that on your machine. And so we're just gonna run down there. Trim my thread. And like I said, since I don't want a lot of waste, I just lay my scissors right along the edge of that diamond and trim. And now we can turn this and go back the other way. If you were doing a bunch, you could absolutely chain piece these the same way you chain pieced your diamonds. Just slide the same direction in one after the other and then go back and go the other way. And so now can lay this just along that mark that we put in. Put that under my presser foot to get us going and then just make sure that I'm headed in the right direction. 
take your time. Trim your thread. All right. So there is the diamond with the rickrack added. And that is what really gives us this awesome argyle effect. And so now the magic of this is in the layout. So you're going to take your print diamonds and you're gonna alternate with regular background diamonds. And so I just used my design wall and started laying this out and I knew I wanted the colors to kind of chase through. So you can see my pinks, I started with this light pink, and in each row I just moved that over. So, you know, it's a, it's a simple staggering method, but that's what I did. So again, here's these pinks, and they're just staggering down. And it actually makes it really simple when you're assembling the rows, because if you look here, when we go to assemble these, we're going to put them together need another diamond, here we go, here's one. We're gonna put them together like this. They're diagonal rows instead of our traditional straight rows. And so on these rows, you can see it's going to be a solid background and a print and a solid background and a print and all the way through. And then the next row, it's a print and an argyle diamond and a print and an argyle diamond. And it's gonna continue the whole way and so it, it makes it really simple to know that you have your pieces in the right place. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense, but I think it will. So, so let's just sew a few of these to show you what I mean. We're going to, let's actually add one more to this guy so that we have these that will stagger. And so we'll start with an argyle here and then we can add our print and you just kind of fold this over and because we're working with the wedge, it's gonna have about a quarter of an inch overhang on this bottom side. And so we're just gonna make sure this is lined up all the way along the edge. And when you get to where the rickrack is, that is a little bulky, but you won't have any trouble if you just take your time while you're stitching over it. So we're gonna start at the top here and we're gonna sew down a quarter inch seam. Make sure we're nice and lined up. There we go. Take a few stitches and then realign and then right down that side. There we go. And you can see when we press that back, it's not going to look nice. So simple. So we'll just roll that back. Then we can go and add the next bit of argyle, do the same thing. Make sure it's lined up and I've got a little bit of overhang down here on the skinny side. That's what you're looking for. That's gonna hang over just a smidge to give you your quarter inch seam allowance and be able to keep your points. There we go. Just like so. And I do like to press to the dark, so I'm gonna roll that to my background. Since I'm not, I don't wanna push the bulk of that um, rickrack behind the background. So you can see how that would just sit right in here just like so. And you just continue depending on how many you have um, in that particular row because the rows are gonna be different lengths. So let's talk about, um, let's add one more to this actually and we'll just pretend that this is the piece that goes right here. So let's do that. We'll add one more diamond to the top. And then I can show you how you would start assembling your rows. Getting it lined up initially is 
the trickiest part, but it is so simple once you convince your brain that it's okay that your rows don't go in straight lines. There we go. There's that piece. And then let's talk about this little half piece that we need to make for the top because we do not have that ready. So let me go ahead and cut out another one of our wedges and we'll go ahead and make one of those as well. Just to show you the whole process. So we're gonna cut off that side, rotate this so I'm not cutting against myself or towards myself. And so just like we made the mark for the whole diamonds, at the top and bottom of our, our rows here, when we need those pieces, we're gonna have a half diamond. And we're gonna mark the half on the sides just like we did with the hole, but we just only have one piece here. So we're gonna mark the two sides, and then we're gonna fold it in half, and we're gonna mark here in the middle as well just like that. And then we can take our Rick Rack, just like we did before, and we can sew that down. And then it's still gonna have the same start and stop points as our whole diamonds. Trim that one. this side. There we go. So you can see how simple that is. Easy peasy. And so then let's add this guy to the top here to finish out that pattern. And you can see how it's just gonna make it the illusion of having that rickrack run all the way through top to bottom of that row. So we'll add that one in. Take a few stitches, readjust. We can press that one back. And you can see how by adding those half blocks along the top, it gives us a straight edge on the top. And so we're not gonna have to cut the top to give us a straight line. We'll just have to cut our two sides. So there's that one. And then let's just show you how this layout is going to continue if you had this on your design wall. And so this one here and here would be your solid background diamonds. And this would be another one of your prints, just like that. And we're just gonna alternate. It goes together so quick and easy. Like I said, then you're gonna trim off your sides straight so you have a nice rectangle top. I've added a great six inch border here. So the quilt ends up measuring 51 by 75. It's got this great batik on the back. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And then I quilted it with uh, champagne bubbles, which is a really fun pattern since this is so linear. I like adding that circular design to it. So I just think this turned out so great. I would love to see this in a variety of colors. So remember if you make this in any fabric of your choosing, be sure to tag us using hashtag MSQC show and tell, and we would love to see it. I hope you guys enjoyed this easy Argyle quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Have a great day.